Hello guys, this is YouTube channel Path and Lighter and this video is regarding Industrial Disputes Act in 1947 and Factories Act 1948 for APFC exam conducted by UPSC and this presented by me Deepak Jaswal. Now about me, I am Inspector Customs and Tax Service Tax. Since 2006, ranked 161 APFC 2012 conducted by UPSC thereafter joined as an APFC Ahmedabad in 2014. Now coming to Industrial Disputes Act 1947, as the name suggests, it is, uh, it is regarding industrial disputes arising between employer and employees. So now let us see some basic things about this act. It is applicable to whole of India including GNK and regulates Indian labor law so far as that concerns trade unions. Now its objective is to secure industrial peace and harmony by providing machinery and procedure for the investigation and settlement of industrial disputes by negotiations. Every industrial establishment carrying on any business, trade, manufacture or distribution of goods and services irrespective of the number of workmen employed therein comes under this act. Now industrial dispute between whom it arises, three categories. It can be arise between employers and employers, employers and workmen, or workmen and workmen. Industrial disputes may be said to be disagreement or controversy between management and labor with respect to wages, working conditions, other employment matters, or union recognition, etc. Now coming to its objective. Its objective is to promotion of measures of securing and preserving industrial harmony and settlement of disputes between employer workmen, employer employer, workman workmen. And its other objectives are rights of registered trade union, prevention of illegal strike and lockout, and promotion of collective bargaining. Now, types of industrial disputes. First is grievance disputes. Then the four things comes under this. Sorry, this this will not be here. Types of industrial disputes. In the, uh, there are four types of industrial disputes. First is interest disputes. Interest disputes arising out of out of deadlocks in negotiation for collective bargaining. And then grievance disputes. There should be you grievance disputes that may pertain to discipline wages, promotions, rights of supervisors, etc. Also called interpretation disputes. Then recognition of workers disputes. In this type, over the rights of a trade union to represent class or category. Unfair labor practices. Those arising out of right to organize acts of violence, failure to implement an award, discriminatory treatment, etc. Now there are two ways in which the basic parties to an industrial dispute can solve the dispute. That is, the two basic parties are the employer and the employees. They can settle their disputes in two ways. First is collective bargaining and second is voluntary arbitration. In collective bargaining, there is settlement under the influence of the state, which means it is compulsory establishment of bipartite committees. Under this, Establishment of compulsory collective bargaining. This means in collective bargaining, it becomes mandatory for both the parties to agree with the award. Then uh, it can be given in two types. First is conciliation and med mediation, which, is vol which can be voluntary or compulsory. And then compulsory investigation, compulsory arbitration or adjudication. Now second type is voluntary arbitration. It is commonly viewed as less expensive and faster than resolving a dispute in court. An arbitra arbitrator deciding the dispute may be a single person or a panel. Sometimes the parties may agree to submit the dispute to an arbitra arbitrator but, the ads are, but at the same time reserve their right to accept or reject the award when it comes. By the process we can see that voluntary arbitration is most preferred one. Now coming to adjudication, in India there are three types of adjudicating authorities for the adjudication of industrial disputes. 
First is labor court, second is tribunals and third is national tribunal. Labor courts and the tribunal can be established both by the central and the state governments. But as the name suggests, the national tribunal is set up by the central government only. The national tribunal is set up to adjudicate such disputes which involve any question of national importance or are of such nature that industrial establishments situated in more than one state are likely to be interested in or affected by them. And labor courts, labor courts adjudicate disputes relating to the propriety or legality of an order passed by the employer under these standing orders discharge or dismissal of workmen, legality or otherwise of a strike or lockout. The tribunal and national tribunal generally deals with such subject matters as wages, bonus profits, sharing, rationalization, allowances, hours of work, provident fund, gratuity, etc. So we can see the cases of lower probability comes under labor court and of higher probability comes under tribunal and national tribunal court. Other tripartite, there are other tripartite bodies at the state level. Some of important are implementation and evaluation committees, committees for particular industries, labor welfare boards or committees. Now coming to Factories Act 1948. In India, the first Factories Act was passed in 1881. This act was basically designed to protect children and to provide few measures for health and safety of the workers. This law was applicable to only those factories which employed 100 or more workers. Then in again 19, 1891, another factory act was passed which extended to the factories employing 50 or more workers. After independence, Factories Act 1948 came into existence. Factories Act includes health, safety, welfare, working hours of adult and annual leave with wages. Now what is factory? Factory, factory is defined in section 2M of the act which means any premises including the pressing spaces parts thereof where on 10 or more workers are working on any day of the preceding 12 months and in any part of which a manufacturing process is being carried on with the aid of power. So, and with, if the factory is working with the aid of power then 10 persons and the factory is working without aid of power then 20 persons. The main objective of this act is to ensure adequate safety measures and to promote the health and safety and welfare of the workers employed in factories, making provisions regarding employment of women and young persons, annual leave with wages, etc. The act ex extended to whole of India including J and K and covers all manufacturing processes and establishment falling with the definitions of factory. It is, it is also applicable to factories belonging to central or state governments. Now working hours of adult. The, uh, there are some criteria under this act. So for working hours of adult, for weekly hours, it must be less than 48 hours. Total working hours must be less than 48 hours. There must be at least one holiday in a week. And in daily hours, there, for daily work, there must be more less than 9 hours. And there must be a half an hour interval for the rest in one day. Now restriction on employment of women and children. Work between 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. only. Strictly restricted for women for employment between 10 p.m. to 5 p.m. This means women can work only between 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Annual leave with wages. Annual, there must be annual leave with wages, wages during leave period, Payments, payment in advance in certain cases, mode of recovery of unpaid wages and power to make rules. This is all it. Subscribe to this channel for free education. Promote it among friends. For any queries or suggestions, mail us at pathenlighter.gmail.com. Thank you.